survivors and welcome to another walking dead road to survival video and in this video we are going to be taking a first look at gold mythic silent charlie who is going to be coming to rts as an event character more information on the event that he's going to be a part of to follow but visually well we've not had a silent charlie in the game before we have had a charlie i don't think it's the same character somehow it is a um kind of whisperer character as you can see and the visuals on the right hand side i do always love the visuals of a whisperer it just looks kind of crazy with the actual hair and stuff like that um but kind of um you know worn down kind of meant to look like a walker kind of the style of uh of whisperers on the right hand side you can see there is no attached weapon but there is on the left hand side he's got a very nice kind of like serrated blade that he's got in his hands very nasty looking and uh someone is in a lot of trouble someone is in a lot of trouble and it is not a walker, that is for sure. He's a whisperer, he's not, he's not gonna take out walkers. Um, he's also got like some stuff around his neck, uh, ears, and uh, some teeth, but also, like, is that like a J? I guess that'll be a J or a T? I'm not, or is it a C for Charlie? It could potentially be, it could potentially be. We'll check out the stats at level 1,600, limit break three. He has got 39,075 attack, 22,328 defense, and 31,630 two hp he is a fast character of course he is going to be a control role gold mythic and he like i said he is going to be joining the whisperer's allegiance so first off we're going to take a look at silent charlie's adrenaline rush and it is called killing flesh it's a 55 ap cost rush so pretty like quick for what you would assume would be an attack team character make a critical attack against an enemy for 500 percent damage if the target had more than 50% of their max HP, they get crosshairs and normalize for the rest of combat. If the target had 50% or less of their max HP, however, he'll deal 20% of their max HP as main damage to them instead. So basically, if he if, if the target is low HP, you can see that Mame is being a bit more like an execute style thing to try and actually take the character out. Whereas if they are not, it was it's more support based obviously there is the whisperer roadmap this character will be used usable there those roadmaps have very high hp so you know those characters while less than 50 percent might not seem like a lot um it's gonna be it could be over 100k a lot of the time still um 20 percent of their max hp as well so let's say if they did have 300 000 max hp and they had 100k hp left and he hit them for um let's say 60k the 20% would do a further 60k main damage because it'd be 20% of their max hp which is obviously pretty decent on those roadmaps actually not too bad when it comes to uh you know pvp as well just because some of the defense team characters around at the moment do have over 100 150k even up to over 200 to 250k max hp at the moment okay so here we are on attack and as you can see we are going to hit the adrenaline rush against someone who has got more than 50 percent of their max hp first if i just do it against the top character here you'll see um normalize and crosshairs come in for the rest of combat you did see a reasonable amount of damage it did seem like higher damage than it actually was and that's because of the specialist skill of silent charlie did remove the bonus hp first and in this case it was over a hundred thousand bonus hp getting removed and then doing damage afterwards now normalizing and crosshairing for the rest of combat is quite good against particular characters obviously characters that can um not get decapped because of their special skill will now get decapped because they're going to be uh, normalized for the rest of combat and there are a lot of those sort of characters around obviously decap does kind of trump um halo so if a character has halo on them and they have crosshairs they will be decapped that's pretty much as simple as it works now that was how it works when the character has more than 50 percent of their max hp let's check out what happens when they have less okay so now we're going to do the adrenaline rush again and i do assure you here this is less than 50 percent max hp on nor only just it's by about 400 hp now what's going to happen this time is the damage is going to come in but also there's going to be main damage at the end now, the damage we saw before is going to be enough this time around to actually take out the character, I would assume. So the main damage isn't even going to come into account. But it's worth noting, obviously, when you come up against teams on those roadmaps, they've got higher defense stats, higher max HP too. 
and obviously in uh, war it's going to be the same sort of case just not as high stats basically we'll do the adrenaline rush and we should be able to take out the character i'm not sure if it's going to show the main it doesn't show the main damage but it would do an extra 20 percent of the max hp someone like nor that would be a reasonably significant amount but um you know, it's not going to be the case when it comes to uh being me being able to show you this but if the character did have higher hp and silent charlie didn't hit as hard maybe they had um damage reduction or something like that on their kit the main effectively would be able to bypass that to a certain extent now jumping straight into the upgrades on the adrenaline rush you can see at grade two it gets an upgrade where if the target had more than 50 percent of their max hp they get crosshairs for the rest of combat at grade four it gets an upgrade where if the target had 50 percent or less of their max hp deal 10 percent of their max hp as main damage to them on top of the actual initial damage as well and then at limit break one it gets an upgrade where if the target had more than 50 percent of their max hp again it will also normalize them for the rest of combat as well as doing the crosshairs for the rest of combat and at limit break three we get that grade four getting upgraded from 10 percent main damage up to 20 percent main damage this is obviously more effective the higher max hp an enemy has a character that his building heavy defense and reduction will obviously still have problems when it comes to maim and uh 20 is the same amount of percentage damage no matter who you're attacking you know if someone's got 100k it's going to be 20 percent it's going to be 20k if someone's got 50k 20 percent it's going to be 10k it's the same percentage overall so it doesn't really matter too much i would say it's probably better off honestly targeting someone that is more than 50 percent of their max hp just because crosshairs and normalize is just so so powerful honestly it's as simple as that and it's not like you're you're not spoilt for choice on these defense teams where you can go for someone where that's going to be effective one of those specialist skills like i said that has um decat resistance seems like a really good target just because they are obviously not going to be able to um you know cleanse that because it's the rest of combat some characters can cleanse so just be aware of that but um you can potentially follow up with someone who deals damage on someone who does cleanse when getting attacks on and so forth so that can be nice just just know that the um the actual normalize comes in after the hit so if you're going to attack someone like a payback you're going to take the hit so make sure you've got like camouflage or guardian shields up and stuff like that just so you don't you know kind of limit the amount of damage that potential is going to be but like i said i think the adrenaline rush is quite nice a normalizer is always good and uh it's kind of nice for the whisper roadmap as well because the Whisperer team is is not very good. And this is an event character, so should be quite accessible. So the next part of Silent Charlie's kit that we're going to look at is going to be the signature move. And it is called Bloody Tactics. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one. Cooldown of two turns, number of uses unlimited. Make a critical attack against a line of enemies for 400% damage each. If the primary target is alert or tough. That line of enemies gets 10,000 bleed damage for three turns. All Whisperer's Allegiance teammates and one other get camouflage for the rest of combat. So this actually looks pretty nice. We'll just go over it individually. Make a critical attack against a line of enemies for 400% damage each. The specialist skill when you hit a crit will reduce um, the character's bonus HP down to zero. Then it will do the damage afterwards. And then obviously it will do 100% heal reduction on those characters as well, which is kind of like a, a small decap. When a character gets taken out, they can't get revived, but also it stops healing and there's heavy amounts of healing around. Um, if the primary target is a little tough doing bleed damage, that's not too bad. It's just a little bit of extra damage. I wouldn't necessarily see that as that big a deal. So you don't have to necessarily you know, prioritize those traits, but you will know that if you do prioritize those traits, you're going to do 100% heal reduction. The bleed is generally going to be ultra effective in that case because they're not going to be able to heal it back up in those turns. The Whisperer's buff here is actually huge. All Whisperer's getting uh, camouflage for the rest of combat is massive. One other teammate does get it too. So if you did want to use this character in like a war attack team, you could use like Hush, Silent Charlie, maybe Beta, and like one or two other characters. Like one character that's self sustain on in terms of how they kind of get away with not hitting being hit by payback maybe they give themselves a guardian shield or something and then the other character potentially will be getting camouflage for the rest of the combat but because this has got a cooldown obviously he can use it again and that other character is going to get it eventually you know if you only use three whispers if you use four whispers that character is always going to get it and it's pretty safe now why this is good for the roadmap for whispers is they don't have any way to deal with paybacks 
There's paybacks quite early on in the roadmap and Whisperers have no way of dealing with it. You can use this signature move first and then you can basically like self-destruct somebody, but one person will get taken out and the rest of the team will be fine. And you can take like blow up Jesus who's on the stages and stuff like that. Um, or you could have like a guardian shield weapon because I think there is one where like a fast weapon that gives someone a guardian shield and try and do it with like Lydia, a um, bit of an older character, but um, it is definitely a, a possible like tactic to use. Whereas right now, there's no nothing to do. You're against payback characters as the Whisperer team. You can't really infect them because the infect can not always land. So there's obviously problems there. <laughs> and uh, this is going to be obviously nice. Uh, it just limits the amount of payback damage that your team is going to take. Okay, so we are going to start the fight. And I have got another Whisperer in this team just to show you it isn't just going to be Silent Charlie who gets this increase. It will be other Whisperers too. And uh, we are going to use the attack against the top line. These are both a tough and an alert character. But if you are going to focus a character, like an alert character, and the one in front of them is fast, always click the one that's alert or tough. Because then it would obviously apply the bleed damage regardless of what the other trait of the character is. Now what you're going to see when I do the signature move is, there should be a reduction in the bonus HP first, then the hit will come in. So you should see the bonus HP just disappear, and then damage will come in against these characters as you'll see bonus hp did remove and then we just obviously took out the character he's got a hundred percent attack buff i think that's from akira so he's doing quite significant damage right now and now we have a hundred percent hit reduction on this character plus we have that ten thousand bleed and because this signature move is a guaranteed crit hit you don't have to build him for crit i mean you could build it for crit damage but you don't have to build him for crit chance at all because it's guaranteed here it's going to proc his special skill which is obviously nice if we look at the upgrades you can see at grade three it gets an upgrade where if the primary target is alert or tough the line of enemies gets 10,000 bleed damage for three turns like i said it's the primary target so always do target an alert or tough character in a line at grade five it gets minus one to starting cooldown so it goes from a two turn starting cooldown down to a one turn starting cooldown and then the limit break two it gets an upgrade where all whisperers allegiance teammates and one other get camouflaged for the rest of combat i think this is pretty big part of this as much as it's always nice to do damage it's always nice to be able to proc your specialist skill or do some extra damage via bleed i think this side of things when it comes to like being a little bit more support when it comes to the camouflage is really good particularly for the whisperers like i talked about they've got a lot of trouble on those remounts when it comes to paybacks and just in general the potential usability of whisperers as an attack team in war or in like raids or something like that is not like amazing but it is obviously getting more viable the more whispers that come out we've got a new leader we've got a new character here beta is still pretty good whether it's uh gonna be good enough we'll have to wait and see that there could be more whispers on the way to have an actual decent viable attack team but regardless minimum should be that these characters should work on one of the roadmaps without too much of a problem so the signature move like i say i think is pretty good it's definitely going to be usable proccing that special skill is definitely a nice little cherry on top 100 a bonus hp reduction plus heal reduction as well is obviously great now silent charlie of course is going to have some mythic abilities these are going to be his passive skills and first one is called precision enemy resistances are 40 percent lower against this fighter that is because he is of the control role this means you know his things are going to land a bit more effectively that includes the normalize the crosshairs on his adrenaline rush that is obviously going to be great and it also does mean the 100 percent heal reduction on his specialist skill so far the next one is called alert awareness all whispers allegiance teammates have their trait damage multiplier against alert enemies increased by a hundred percent all other teammates have their trait damage multiplier against alert enemies increased by 50 percent this is why he was doing so much damage against Nor. I was like, well, that 100% attack buff is pretty good. But damn, he is hitting hard. And it is because of the, effectively, he's got attack versus alert. More powerful than what a mod can do at this point, which is obviously great. And then obviously, if you do use a mod as well, it will multiply with that and stack really heavily. And there, on those roadmaps, there are some brutal alert character stages. I'm talking about the ones with like Lucas on it. Really tough. Whereas now, it's, this is going to work really, really nicely for the Whisperers and anyone else, honestly. 50% even is still pretty good. The next passive is called Defense Ripper. When performing this fighter's special skill, the target gets minus 10% defense with an additional minus 10% for each other Whisperers Allegiance teammate for two turns. 
this is actually pretty good you can set up really nicely against particular characters especially like i said on those roadmaps just because they've got such high hp he's most likely not going to be able to take them out with his signature move so his signature move will remove bonus hp it'll do 100 percent heal reduction and it will potentially do defense down and scale up based on how many whispers you've got potentially up to minus 60 percent by the, the looks of things that way any follow-up damage should be a guaranteed takedown and you know if you get fortunate enough if depending on who you attack with and who your leader is you could potentially like prop Mich a michelle and and have everyone get their adrenaline rush or you're just gonna be able to take someone out very early on in the fight like i say characters like lucas really are, are like brutal to deal with so obviously actually pretty nice to take out on those roadmaps and, and the last passive is called critical whisper all whispers allegiance teammates get 60 crit all other teammates get 30 crit instead this is obviously just going to be great for charlie himself because he can hit crits more often that way his signature is a guaranteed crit but this is obviously nice but there are quite a lot of specialists in the, the whispers that rely on hitting crits and uh, some of the older ones though like lydia and alpha they both have, have headhunter so that obviously is going to be good for them and just hitting crits generally on people who have att attack based skills means they're just going to do more damage generally speaking or have better chance to hit that crit which would be more damage so it's pretty much as simple as that okay so what i decided to do was to show you the passives of silent charlie on an actual stage with uh you know the stellar roadmaps as you can see we've got the round time at the top pretty much as simple as that when we come up against these characters they have higher hp generally speaking so things are going to scale better so on and so forth i could give him a weapon that has um you know ransack on it we have the ransack fast weapons and that way when i target a particular line i could effectively you know steal away the halo on this first stage for instance let's go for the bottom line you can see his damage output isn't too bad it's not too bad because we removed the bonus hp first it always looks much nicer than it is and then you can see minus 50 percent defense for um for two turns that means any follow-up damage that i have should do pretty decent damage even on a basic attack with no gear or anything like that against the stellar roadmap it's not too bad it's not too bad 13k just flat now there isn't any alert characters here realistically that i can prop a nuke because uh we, we haven't got any nukers left but basically any damage that i would do to this character right now would mean that i would get 100 percent extra multiplier by any character so if I, I did have beta which i don't have on the test region i'd be able to nuke this character really hard and as you can see as just a little side note because i used the signature move that gave um camouflage to everybody on my team for the rest of combat they're all whispers so you can see they've all got the uh camouflage for the rest of combat which is obviously great now if we go into the upgrades on the passives you can see a grade one gets the first half of alert awareness all whispers allegiance teammates have their trait damage multiplier against alert enemies increased by 20 percent all other teammates have their trait damage multiplier increased against alert enemies by 10 percent at grade two gets the first half of precision enemy resistance is a 20 percent lower against this fighter and then at grade three gets the second half of alert awareness where all um whisperer teammates get a further 80 percent making 100 percent total and all other teammates get a further 40 percent making it 50 percent total moving on to grades four and five you can see at grade four he gets defense ripper part one when performing this fighter's specialist skill the fighter gets a minus five percent defense with an additional minus five percent for each other whisperer allegiance teammate for two turns then at grade five he gets the first half of critical whisper all whispers allegiance teammates get 20 crit all other teammates get 10 crit instead and those will get boosted into the limit breaks with limit break one coming in precision two is the boost for precision and precision two gives a further 20 percent lower resistances against this fighter making it 40 percent reduction total then in limit break two defense ripper two comes in making it 10 percent defense down and then a further 10 percent for each other whisperers allegiance teammate for two turns it is worth noting that this is other whispers allegiance teammates originally i thought potentially it could be up to 60 percent because he could be included himself but he is not i mean effectively he is because he's going to be doing down the initial 10 percent all the time but any other allegiance teammate comes in and it'll be a further 10 percent up to 50 percent as i showed in that clip previously then at limit break three critical whisper two comes in all whispers allegiance teammates get a further 40 crit and all other teammates get a further 20 crit instead 
making it, I believe, 60 crit for Whisperers and 30 crit for everyone else. Now, I really like these passives because they don't just buff Silent Charlie, they also effectively kind of support based because it will set up other characters to be able to do more damage as well, or it will just straight up buff them with the alert damage uh, increase on the multiplier. So it is actually really nice. A lot of characters when they give themselves damage are only giving themselves damage. This is really nice. I'd say like two to three of these passives, if not, you know, all of them except precision, are just good for the entire team and very useful for Whisperers for sure. And like I said, he is an event character, should be a bit more accessible. So that's actually a pretty good thing. Now, the last thing we're going to look at on Charlie's main kit is going to be a specialist skill and it is Devastating Blow. One of the better specialist skills out there, particularly now that things like Decap have started to fall off. So this is actually pretty nice. When this specialist performs a critical attack, they will remove all bonus HP from its target and apply 100% heal reduction for two turns. What's massive about this is the bonus HP re removal comes in first, then they do the damage. So like, let's say someone has 200,000 you know, 200, HP, sorry, and they've got 100% bonus HP, that's 400,000 HP. If he was to hit them for 100,000, they would go down to 300,000 HP effectively with the bonus HP on top. But because the Devastating Blow will remove bonus HP first, it will effectively do a 200,000 hit with the Devastating Blow because it will remove bonus HP. Then it will do 100,000 to the main HP. So effectively doing a 300,000 hit in, a, in certain scenarios. And that does mean that he effectively is going to do more damage that way. But he is also just removing bonus HP to allow teammates to just go straight for the main HP. Obviously, going through bonus HP can be brutal, especially on particular characters that have, you know, 100, 200,000 HP. These roadmap characters that can have more. So, yeah, definitely nice. One of the... I don't think it's underrated. I think most people think Devastating Blow is nice, but it isn't really that, like, prevalent. And I'd say it is quite important to have someone who has some something like this. The 100% heal reduction on top is nice. Very good against particular uh, specialists, like overheals and any characters that have massive heals within their own kit. And also, of course, if you do take a character down that has 100% heal reduction, they should not be able to get revived by anyone else for those couple of turns. But if they have Halo on them, they can self-revive because Halo does not get blocked by heal reduction. Now, Silent Charlie does not have an attached weapon. He does have a weapon in his hands and his art on the left-hand side. We'll have to see what you know that is if they ever release it. But Charlie could use a multitude of weapons i think the ransack weapon seems very good just increases obviously support base kit he's gonna be stealing buffs away with that, those multi-hits off the early part of the fight and um that, that could be halos like i said that could be very nice uh so he's going to be doing quite a lot he could be removing 100 bonus hp doing a bit of damage 100 hill reduction stealing away two buffs on those two characters off the start of the fight quite a lot going on when it comes to that potential the ransack weapon was reasonably accessible i think it's been in events i think it's been in um like event stores i think it's been in those stashes so i think you should have one now unless you've been really unlucky and obviously ransack is just very powerful in general and off trait being a fast character is very nice indeed now you could go all out on attack do, do extra damage based on enemies hp high attack as possible 1535s it's completely up to you but if you're using him from the roadmap i would say you want to rely on characters that are built more for damage like beta and stuff like that and utilize charlie more for his support based kit which is really really nice so that was just the first look at gold mythic silent charlie i believe it's the first ever silent charlie to come to the game i mean we don't know because whisperers aren't generally named so could have been in the background the entire time we just didn't know um, but it has a really nice kit when it comes to being a support based character really good for um, whisperers allegiance in particular but it's going to be useful regardless because he doesn't not give buffs to people they're just not as powerful against non um, whisperer characters but for a roadmap he's going to be great and the hush for a silent charlie team up is going to be awesome we'll have to see if there's going to be any more whisperers coming out i think they probably need a like more fresh damage dealer i love beta i think he's great but um, he's, he's kind of old. He's kind of old at this point. And I think they need a character with slightly higher base stats. Slightly higher percentage damages. We'll have to see what they decide to do when it comes to uh, the rest of that team. But um, I think it's looking pretty good. And I did say when Hush came out that the potential of more Whisperers is, is pretty good. I said hopefully at least one more coming out. When it, especially, like I say, when it comes to damage. Because they got that leader who's pretty good. Now they got their support character who's pretty good. 
We would have that damage dealer as well. That's pretty good. We'll have to see. So tell me your thoughts though on Silent Charlie as an event character coming to RTS. It is another fast character. I did just clock that. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I think it's like seven fast characters out of the last nine or ten uh, event characters. But what can you do? Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.